Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to talk about distance and displacement with definite integrals. Let's first discuss the difference between distance and displacement. Distance is the total amount of ground covered by an object as a result of its motion. Displacement, on the other hand, is how far an object ends up from its starting position. For example, let's suppose that the grocery store is three miles from your home and you walk there. The distance you've traveled is three miles. Your displacement is also three miles since you're now three miles from your starting position. But now let's suppose that you walk three miles on the treadmill. The distance you've traveled is still three miles, but your displacement is zero because you end up in the same place. So now let's suppose that between t equals 1 and t equals 3, a car has a velocity of 30 miles per hour. This is a graph of the car's velocity function. Note that the y-axis has units of miles per hour and the x-axis has units of hours. If we find the area under the curve, we get the total distance that the car travels between the hours of 1 and 3. 30 miles per hour times 2 hours equals 60 miles. We can also express this as the definite integral from 1 to 3 of v of t dt, which equals 60 miles. Now let's suppose that between t equals 3 and t equals 5, the car is going in the opposite direction, negative 30 miles per hour. We can see that the area from 3 to 5 below the curve is the same as the area above the curve from 1 to 3. However, if we find the definite integral from 3 to 5, we'll get negative 60. If we want to know the total distance that the car traveled between t equals 3 and 5, we would need to first take the absolute value of the velocity and then find the definite integral. Taking the absolute value of the velocity function makes the area under the curve lie above the x-axis instead of below. This means the definite integral is positive. Remember, distance is always positive. And note that if we find the definite integral from 1 to 5 of the original velocity function, where part of the function is above the x-axis and the other part is below, the result is zero. This is the car's displacement from t equals 1 to t equals 5. Let's continue to look at this idea of distance and displacement, but this time with a velocity function that's not constant over an interval. This velocity function, v of t, has units of meters per second. This would mean that the units on the y-axis are meters per second and the units on the x-axis are seconds. If we find the area under this curve by calculating the definite integral, the units would be meters per second times seconds, which would equal meters and that would give us the total distance that this object traveled from A to B. But note that this velocity curve is entirely above the x-axis, which means that the area under the curve from A to B also represents the displacement of the object from A to B. However, if we have a velocity curve like this, where some of the curve drops below the x-axis, and we calculate the definite integral from A to B, some of the area will be subtracted out due to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So in this case, the area under the curve represents the net distance traveled from A to B, which is the displacement. If we want the total distance traveled, we would need to find the area under the absolute value of the velocity function, because that would make the entire function lie above the x-axis, and the entire definite integral would be positive. There would be no regions that lie below the x-axis with signed area that we would need to subtract out. So now we can summarize. The integral from A to B of v of t dt gives us the displacement of an object from A to B. But the integral from A to B of the absolute value of v of t dt gives us the total distance that the object travels from A to B. Let's do an example problem. Find the displacement and distance that a particle travels on the interval 1, 3 if its velocity is given by v of t equals t squared sine of pi t. To find the displacement, we'll find the integral from 1 to 3 of t squared sine pi t dt, and that gives us 2.546. To find the distance, we'll find the integral from 1 to 3 of the absolute value of t squared sine pi t dt. 
and that gives us 5.472. Note that I've used a calculator to solve both of these integrals. And that's it for now. I hope you now understand how to use definite integrals to find distance and displacement. And that's how you rock calculus. Yeah.